Hello everyone, it is Jason and I am back bringing you another deck profile. Uh, surprisingly enough, this is from the same tournament as some of the other deck profiles that I've done. So it is from the uh, GenCon Indie 2005 tournament. I really wanted to bring you this deck because I thought it was a very interesting deck and I'm actually surprised that it was able to win. Uh, it is Ken Whitworth's Baby Blocker Blitz deck. So it's a very unique deck in my opinion and I thought it would be a lot of fun to go over and uh, try out for myself. Now before I sort of give my feedback and my analysis, I thought I would do what I always do and just go through the list with you guys first. So, we'll open things up with four Aqua Guard. Surprisingly enough, Aqua Hulk is not the first card on the list, he is the second card on the list. So yeah, I've got four Aqua Guard, uh, one mana 2k blocker who cannot attack. Aqua Hulk, as you guys all know what he does when he hits the field, you get to draw a card. Very good, very good. Same with Coral, five mana 2k, a bouncer creature to the top of your opponent's deck once he hits the field. Then we've also got four Laura Giga Sky Guardian, one mana 2k blocker, so very similar to Aqua Guard. However, he is able to attack uh, other creatures. Not too sure if that's particularly relevant, but I just wanted to make that distinction. Can I get a hashtag light privilege, please? We've also got four Magus Vizier of Magnetism, who's kind of like a bigger Aqua Hulkus. Uh, four mana 3k does the same thing. I uh, haven't seen him in a while, uh, now that I think about it, since I haven't been profiling my own personal decks. Uh, we've also got four Marine Flower, and got three Zepimedius. Uh, we've also got four Vest the Oracle, same thing as Laura Giga, except he's a Lightbringer. And the last card in the list we will look at is Mysterious Sonic Guardian. Whenever another creature hits the field, draw a card, whether it be it yours or your opponent's. Uh, that's pretty cool to me. Uh, by the looks of it, the Mysterious is the engine that this deck revolves around super cool because all these creatures are super cheap they all cost like one mana and then you get to replace them with another card in your hand so i think that's pretty cool in terms of the spells we have three diamond cutter and so i can s you guys can probably tell uh the strategy of the deck uh so what diamond cutter reads is this turn ignore any effects that would prevent your creatures from attacking your opponent as in attacking people so we get to ignore summoning sickness we get to ignore this creature can't attack or this creature can't attack players that's pretty cool and uh last card energy stream of course uh, it is a water deck we do want to draw cards and so yeah we have energy stream uh, my guess is this deck had uh, sets dms one two six or seven uh, so yeah all right in terms of statistics looking pretty good here i'm very much liking this distribution between light and water uh, it's nearly a 50 50 split so that's good for me distribution by cost whoa nearly half of the deck can be played with one mana big fan of that surprisingly enough no two mana cards but you know uh, that's cool uh, for the four mana cards um we ah okay so that's makers of course and then the five mana we've actually got quite a few of these um so that would be your diamond cutter which is you know kind of how you win that's your win condition and then that's mist rius and also coral um yeah, so the whole strategy of this deck is really to just creature mass your opponents with all these baby blockers and then uh, hit them with the diamond cutter for the big win. Um, now, what I'm going to do next, as per usual, is I will be going over the list and some of the changes that I would make. Now, first of all, I think Coral is a bit of a curious one. I feel like Coral really... Uh, belongs in controlled decks or decks that combo with illusionary merfolk i feel like coral doesn't do a whole lot for this deck just because you know <laughs> you, you he's kind of expensive it's a bit contrary to the strategy of the deck um i just i'm just not feeling it uh what i would do is i might replace coral with more draw cards perhaps brain serum uh, i might replace him with some more bounce cards like aqua surfer so if i get broken into uh, at least i have some sort of defense and another creature that can attack and um yeah i was gonna say emerald but i just took a look at the deck we don't have any shield triggers <laughs> so that's probably not the best idea but yeah uh that's probably the route in which i would go uh, for the for the creature distribution, uh, we see that he has eight of the light blockers and aqua guard. Uh, 
marine flowers at me so he's got way more water blockers than he does have light blockers uh, when you come to think of it though that's um, not too bad I guess because I was gonna say like he's slightly heavier on the water section so what we could do is we might be able to replace some water blockers with light blockers that they all effectively serve the same purpose however the thing is uh, the only other one mana 2k light blocker that I'm aware of is like some rainbow phantom card and that came out in shattered rainbow so uh, that's not you know, that's not relevant for the changes that I'm making. Um, now, in my own personal testing of this deck, I found that one of the big problems is this deck is very, 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 very highly susceptible to mass destruction cards. So that's Burst Shot and Searing Wave, even Apocalypse Vice. Uh, it doesn't really take a whole lot to kind of force the strategy of the deck to crumble. And in that regard, I'm just going to say it out now. I don't think this deck is... Uh, a very effective deck uh, given what we now know about the state of the dual masters english game however in terms of changes that i would like to make that could make it better um for the cards available at the time there's really not a whole lot i could change uh, i made that comment about coral maybe it might be better to swap out some of the one cost blockers with two cost blockers. So that's your Hunter Fish, your Madrillion Fish, Sarius, Emerald Grass. They are a bit more resistant to certain spells, and I don't really think there's that big of a difference sometimes between playing a blocker on turn one and turn two. But then you could also make a case that it's an extra creature, like if you play Aqua Guard and then another Aqua Guard rather than just one Hunter Fish. So I don't know. This deck doesn't have Holy All, but given that it's supposed to be a rush deck and, you know, you don't really have room for that, I can see why it doesn't play Holy All. Uh, just, I don't know, I just feel like it's kind of easy to stop, like if your opponent has a lot of blockers on their own. Um, some other changes. Perhaps it makes sense to include Larva Gear in this deck. Maybe, you know, to give yourself more outs, because... This deck, as I just pointed out, this deck can get, really get stopped by blockers. I suppose that's why you have Coral, but I think Larva Gear is a more suitable replacement for him. Uh, so perhaps we can swap out the Corals for like some Larva Gears or at least three Larva Gears. He can at least evolve on Larva Giga, and he can also evolve on to Mist Rius. Now, if we had access to more cards, I think a natural inclusion in this deck could be Palaolisis Morning Guardian. I'm just going to bring that up now. I think Palolesis is a fantastic card. Uh, it makes a lot of uh, rogue strategies viable, or maybe not viable, but it does help them a lot. And it's also super annoying to play against, so in that regard, I hate it. <laughs> it's, uh, what I'm trying to say is it's a pretty neat card. It's very versatile in terms of what it can do. His effect is, during your opponent's turn, each of your other creatures gets plus 2,000 power. Naturally, you can't attack players, but at 3 mana, 2.5k, that's a pretty darn good effect. Uh, Palolesis will then buff your other creatures. It makes your one-cost blockers power 4k. Uh, that makes them a lot more likely to survive a Searing Wave because Searing Wave can't hit them. They survive Burst Shot, they survive Crimson Hammer. I, I, I think Palolesis is a natural inclusion into the deck. Uh, emergency Typhoon, I don't... Maybe you might need Emergency Typhoon. I'm not particularly sure, but if it helps you get through your deck to find Diamond Cutter faster, I'm always a fan of that. Perhaps you could also opt in for a fourth Energy Stream. Uh, energy Stream is a pretty uh, good draw card, but I think in terms of flow charting, you maybe, maybe you don't really need the fourth, just because on turn three you play Stream or Hulkist, then turn four you play a, another one of those, or you play a Magrist, and then turn five you really want to summon Mysteria, so just go crazy so i think that's a fairly quick overview and deck profile for this baby blocker blitz deck uh, super cool concept i personally haven't found a way to make it work uh, maybe i can give it a try once more with larva gear so i don't have to play holy Yaw and i have another win condition and also with uh what's his name oh, palo Lysis. i just brought him up i already forgot his name uh, maybe that could be slightly better but super cool concept um i, I think this guy really just kind of caught his opponents by surprise <laughs> which is how he was able to take the event uh i rag on him though thank you so much for watching uh, i hope you enjoy them this is one of the more different deck profiles and i really enjoyed uh, going over this one and uh yeah stay tuned for more i'll see you guys later